Live from the Toowoomba Sports Club, this is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM, free on Power TV Australia. And with regular host Obi away this week, Paul Reedy's in charge. It's over to you, Paul. Yeah, thanks very much, Robbo, and welcome to another edition of the Toowoomba Rugby League Footy Show, right down here at the Sports Club. And Obi is away, as they tell us, but he's not just having a holiday. He's gone down to the Gold Coast, he's got the red budgie smugglers out, and he's down there auditioning for the next edition of Baywatch. Good luck down there, Obi. Hopefully he won't get on, so you'll be back next week. I'm joined here today by a couple of legends. Uh, Mark Tukey and Brett Seymour. Mark, yeah. welcome along, mate, to the uh, TRL Footy Show. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you finding uh, Toowoomba? Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, mate. It's a bit chilly out there today, uh, coming up the range, and uh, but no, no, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying your time out there at Oakey, mate, with the Bears. Good club starting to get going again? Yeah, absolutely. We're a club rebuilding, and uh, yeah, it's a slow process, but uh, yeah, we're getting there. Slowly. Yeah, you seem to have a little bit more depth this year throughout the grades, with the 18s and the reserve grade also getting some wins on the board. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, we've got plenty of good numbers there. We've probably got to get them to train a little bit more, but um, uh, the numbers are, are pretty good uh, compared to the last few years, apparently. And how's Tommy Friend going, mate? He's done a lot of screaming over the years as a coach. Has he mellowed at all, or is he still out there bellowing oh, at the boys? He's still dropping a few f bombs and things like that at training, uh, but and during the game, but. Um, yeah, he's uh, going through the processes with us as well, and uh, unfortunately he can't make any tackles or uh, do any runs, so um, it's frustrating for him, I can see that, but um, we're all on the same page and we go in the right direction. Yeah, he's a good guy, he's got a lot of passion for rugby league, and good to see him out there helping the Bears. And also with me is Brett Seymour, former NRL player as well, and the coach of the Valleys Roosters, Brett. How you going, mate? Yeah, g'day, Paul. Yeah, going good, mate. Things are um, ticking along all right, and um, yeah, happy to be here. I'll say, mate, the Roosters, they're going particularly well this year. Sitting second on the table at the moment and uh, kicking along quite well, mate. So how's the team going to shape up, mate, for the year? You're looking forward to the end of it? Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, um, yeah, we're just trying to build um, the foundations at the moment and, and um, work out how we want to um, approach sort of towards the end of the year. Um, last year we sort of got, got found out and um, you know, hopefully we've learned our lesson. Yeah, and look, there's a lot of great Toowoomba Rugby League action we're going to be talking about. But also, next week, State of Origin, boys. The teams were announced just the other day, mm. so next Wednesday, it's all up. I see the New South Wales fellas are really crowing at the moment about uh, their side. They think they're in for it this year. How do you uh, rate the sides, mate, and what do you think of the result could be? Yeah, it's a bit of an unknown. Uh, we're so used to the, the Queensland side having such a good standard um, and New South Wales just had to try and beat that standard. So it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a weird feeling and, and there's, a, there's a real a lot of uh, anxiety around the game on, like, is Queensland going to be able to do it again? Um, I think they have got a, re a pretty good side, um, but you just don't know. It's a bit of an unknown this So year. what's your tip for New oh, South Wales or Queensland? No, nah, Queensland for sure. I'll, I'll go Queensland in a tight one, one or two points really. Mm. Very good. Brett, you've uh, mm. played uh, a lot of NRL football as well. Uh, mate, what do you think of the State of Origin sides? Um, yeah, it's, it's picked on form and not just um, New South Wales. And Queensland have, have done the same. They left out Boyd and Matt Scott. You know, it's, it's a bit of a changing in the guard from, from their perspective as well. So. Um, the speed of New South Wales is going to be a threat, but yep. Queensland, you know, they've, they've got their structures and shapes that they stick to, and um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a match in, you know, made in heaven, really. Yeah. New, New South Wales look like they've got one of those sides in the back line that's going to be uh, pretty hard to stop. But in, on the other hand, I suppose the defensive effort of their back line could be a bit of a telling yeah. factor for New South Wales. Yeah, they can all score a try, but like um, you've seen, Roberts and. Latrell Mitchell, they they they're not really good at stopping them. No, so, exactly um, right. Yeah, Queensland don't have a, a, a recognised goal kicker. That may be an issue, but I'd go Queensland a tight one. And how about the local boy, Andrew McCulloch from the Dolby uh, side, yeah. getting a, a no, run down there? Congrats to him. He's been re he's been really good for them for a long while, so you know, he deserves that crack. Yeah, I reckon so too. So great to see another product of the Downs getting an opportunity in uh, State of Origin. But look, we'll move on now to the Mustangs. And the Western Mustangs uh, played the curtain raiser on Friday night between the, the Storm and the Cowboys. And uh, the boys look forward to that. They got to travel up there. Uh, the Blackhawks, though, most of their team uh, played NRL under-20s last year. They came back. They were big boys, Brett. Mm. They were very strong. 
and yeah. uh, they did put it on us. The boys stuck to their task, and actually, probably the last 15 minutes, we played a lot better than we did for the rest of the match. Mm. So a little bit of a disappointing result, 52 to nil for the Mustangs. But look, they travel down to East this weekend uh, at Suzuki Stadium, Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock. Have a look on QRL Live and uh, watch the Western Mustangs under 20s be able to get up over the Eastern Tigers. And I'm backing them this weekend uh, to get a win on the board. Uh, a couple of other games that happened in the happened outside the region as well last weekend was the Div 1 Phillies, so the Valleys Toowoomba Phillies. They're going along, uh, haven't had a win yet, but some of the games, Brett, you would have seen a few of these games out there yeah. at the home ground of Valleys, and uh, the girls have gone particularly well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing well for a team that's um, just been put together, playing against um, you know, a lot of quality sides, uh, rep representatives uh, littered through them all, so... Yeah, you know, they're only going to be better for the for the um, for the the outing. But yeah, you know, hopefully they can snip snip a win sometime soon. Yeah, very shortly. So they did play against Burley on the weekend. Burley sixty to nil over the uh, Toowoomba Phillies. Um, but in that Burley side, there's about at least four Gillaroos that I know of in there. So it's pretty hard coming up against them. They're very um, experienced and and obviously yeah. played a lot of top level rugby league. Unfortunately, the Div Two Phillies had to forfeit. Um, due to lack of players, we had a number of them out injured in the first grade and in the Div 2, so we had to make sure we filled the top grade and uh, they'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. They get a bye this weekend and Div 1, they're at home at Herbstein at Oval and they're playing against the South's Magpies. Now, the Souths have a number of Queensland yeah. and Re Australian yeah, Steph, representatives. Steph Hancock's one, you know, she's, she's, a, she's a really good player, so... They're, they're going to have to tackle her all weekend. And I don't wish them too much <laughs> good luck. luck, you know. Good luck with that. Yeah. She'd make it in one of our footy te our men's teams. And mate, you've been out there watching a little bit of the girls, and have they been bringing a crowd to the games as well? Have been helping boost yeah. the the people that come to the Valley yeah. Roosters home ground. Yeah, it's good to see some different faces down at the footy, and um, yeah, it's good to watch. And they, they they throw it around a bit, and they don't mind um, making the odd tackle either. There you go. So take the opportunity this weekend on Saturday out at Herbstein Art Oval. Go out and watch the uh, Valley's Phillies play and see them take on South Logan Magpies and you'll get to see some Gillaroos in action for the Magpies as well. Well, that's it for the first segment. We'll take a bit of a break. And coming up after the break, we'll look at last weekend's Round 9 games on the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM, live and free on Power TV Australia. And thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club, live and free on Power TV Australia. And now it's back to Paul in the panel. Yeah, thanks, Robbo. We'll have a bit of a quick look at last week's games in the TRL. Firstly, there was Waddles versus Warwick. What a battle out there of two clubs that have uh, had a very formidable uh, opponents, I suppose, of each other for over a number of years. Uh, Waddles superior though, 34 defeated Warwick 22, which puts the Waddles Warriors at the top of the Hutchinson Builders A grade table. In reserve grade, Waddles and Warwick drew 24 all. Under 18s, Warwick too strong, 36 over Waddles 18. And also out there, Souths 36 defeated South Burnett 22. That was a little bit of an upset there in the under 18s. And second division, Stanthorpe 36, too good for the Warwick Cowboys 6. This would have been a pretty good game to get out there and watch. And I think Waddles would have been pretty keen to, uh, to get a win to secure their place at the top of the table and a position hopefully in the Madsen Rasmussen. How did you feel about that, Brett? Did you think that it went that way it should have? Yeah, I, I think so. Travis has got them humming along. They're, not, they're going about their business pretty quietly and um, they're definitely going to be there when the whips are cracking. Mark, you would have fronted up against both these sides this season, Warwick or Waddles, have you? Yeah, we got Warwick this weekend, um, but we played Waddles two weeks ago. Um, and yeah, well, you've got yeah, you've got Duggan and um, and what's in Burnsy in the yeah. in the halves there. They're two of the best halves in the competition, and um, and while they're leading the side around, they got a, they're they're enthusiastic and they're all fit and um, healthy young fellas. So um, they're they're going to be thereabouts at the back end of the year for sure. So another great game on the weekend was Highfields versus the Valleys Roosters. 
two of the sides we expect to be uh, at there at the at the end of the season when the whips are cracking. Highfield's 30, too good for the Roosters, 24, in a very close game that had its ups and downs. Reserve grade, Highfield's 26, defeated the Valley's Roosters, 6. And under 18s, this would have been a cracking match as well. Highfield's 26, defeated Valley's Roosters, 20. So, Brett, you were there. Your boys uh, had their chances, I believe, in that mm. game. Mate, where do you think you might have won or lost the game? Um, yeah, looking back on it, it was, a, it was a quality game of footy and um, sometimes you've got to just tip your hat to the, to the opposition. Um, I'm sort of learning that now, I'm not playing, but um, yeah, they were very good. Um, Gus got them going along well. Um, obviously, you see they won all three grades, so um, they've definitely got the... the Depth um, in the, the club. Yeah, they're going good. Um, yeah, they're a very good club and they, they run things uh, accordingly. Yeah, and Gus, he was serving the suspension there as the, um, the coach of the Highfields uh, team, and he's got a, another week yet to serve um, out there. But it was a former Valleys boy, Denzel Burns, that came back uh, mm. from the Ipswich Jets, and uh, he caused a little bit of trouble for you, mate. Yeah, yeah, lost a bit of sleep over him, but yeah, that's the way it is. They're quality players, and you want to see them playing, so uh, good on him. Yeah, so anyway, that was another great game. Also, Pittsworth Danes, 28 defeated the Oakey Bears, 20 reserve grade. Pittsworth in a close one, 24, just got over the Bears, 22. In the under-18s, another close one, another two-point difference of Pittsworth, 20 defeating the Bears, 18. And second division, Pittsworth, 28 defeated the Bears, 16. Mark, this was a pretty good game, they tell me, and uh, he's had a great chance. And the Danes, they're ticking along quite nicely this season. Yeah, absolutely. The same thing. They've just beat us in all four grades. You know, they're, they're, they're a well-balanced club as well. Um, last year's grand finalists, so uh, um, we had a crack at them. Uh, we were our own worst enemy. We, we didn't complete many sets at all. Um, and, the, and to their credit, they didn't complete too many sets either. It was a bit scrappy. Um, but yeah, we were in the fight we, uh, in every single grade. Um, you know, we, we um, had a kick in the reserve grade to draw the game and, and they missed that one and we went down by two. Uh, and yeah, our guys were in the hunt the whole all day. Um, it felt like we were under the pump and we were miles behind, but um, when we looked at the scoreboard, we were still in the game. So, um, you were running at half-time in front though, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, it, we, we, again, I've said it all, and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face again, but we're, we're just building and um, we're, we're getting there, but we're just not quite up to the standard of these um, clubs that have got the depth. And we will be by the back end of the year, no problems about that. And next year, you know, let's hope. Uh, uh, let's who who were some at. of the standouts for the Oakey Bears in that game? Oh, Corey Mullins has probably been our, our standout all season, big front row, young fella from Gatton. Um, he's um, willing to carry and um, he put on some really good shots as well. Um, so he's probably been our absolute standout. Aaron Cherry always, um, you know, he makes his 50 tackles a game mm. uh, and doesn't make too many errors. Um, so yeah, and, we, and Robbo, you know, out wide scoring tries and things like that. So we just, uh, we just got to get the ball rolling with um, some completing some sets, mate. That was the Obi and Cookie Call 2 uh, last weekend. I was listening to that on the radio and a young fellow who plays for the, uh, the Bears, there's not much of him, but Dylan Adamson seems to get in and pull off some great try-saving tackles and finds the line a little bit himself as well. So he's not much of him though, is he? Yeah, no, he's only light on, he's only a light fellow, but he's light on his feet and uh, he came from uh, mm. Valleys last year, uh, came back to Oakey and uh, mate, yeah, he's been one of our best guys as well. Uh, he's versatile to swap with Robbo to go to fullback in centre and so he can play kind of anywhere in the backs as well and he's got a, you know, he's very good under pressure catching those balls and, he can, and he's a good goal kicker as well. So he's a valuable part of our team for sure. Mm. And the TRL, it's certainly living up to uh, expectations this year with a Another close game on the weekend. The Dolby Devils, 24, mm. Dolby Diehards, I should say, 24 defeated the Gundawindi Boars, 22. Reserve grade, another close game. Dolby, 26, Gundy, 22. And under 18, Dolby made it a clean sweep, 32 defeated Gundy, 16. So that would have been mm. another good game there, and we'll be looking forward to that is one of our matches of the round next weekend. The Dolby team will be playing against the Valley's Roosters. Another big game in the uh, Toowoomba Rugby League. The Gatton Hawks back in the winners list, 56 defeated Brothers 16. Reserve grade Gatton 56, Brothers nil. Under 18, once again, Gatton 66 over Brothers 22. Second hmm. division, making it a four way winner. Gatton again. 52 defeated Brothers 4. Brothers have actually surprised a little bit. Um, only a week or two ago, they pushed um, yourselves right to the limit with the Roosters. Yeah, yeah, no, that they. Um 
I had a really good crack at us, and you know, it, was a, it was not a bad game of footy. It was pretty um, intense because you know the, the rivalry is there between us. Um, but I think they get a couple of kids that come from out of town, and they may not have went there last week, so that sort of gives the reason why the, the score lines were that inflated. Yeah, and Gatton, they're a big side, aren't they? Yeah. They've got some big boys um, all across the park there, so they're a they're a hard side to handle on their day. Um, but that's a bit of a look at uh, last weekend's action in the Hutchinson Builders Toowoomba Rugby League. Before the break, though, we interviewed Connor Boney and Harrison Hartley, who are from the Oakey Bears under-18s. Let's have a bit of a look. Up next, we'll look at the points table and preview round 10. This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM. Andrew O'Brien reporting for QRL and TRL Media, and we've just witnessed one of the best under-18 games of the whole season with the, well, the local club just going down by two points. And we've got their players. Hey, mate, you've been getting touched up the last couple of weeks, mate. What's your name? Uh, Connor, Connor Boney, yeah. Yeah, and what, what happened there today, mate? What, was, what were you doing? I don't know, just really not, not that many people that talking up. Talking up that much, really? I don't know. Oh, but hang on, give yourself an uppercut, yeah. mate. Yeah, like you were in front, mate, and you played well, a lot better than the last few. Yeah, weeks. yeah better than the last couple of weeks. Like we picked up in the rocks, like yeah. tackles, tackle drills, and all that was going good. So what's doing with the hair, mate? Is this no, is this your Bob Marley look? Or yeah, just Bob Marley look. Uh, just like Bob Marley, so I just decided to go out. out see a lot of people with long hair. So he wouldn't have been alive when you were born, is that right? No, he wouldn't have been. Actually. No, that's right. And, okay, now, I mean, who we got the try scorer? How many tries you scored today? Oh, just the one, yeah. Okay, and what's your name? Uh, Harrison Hartley. Harrison who? Hartley. Hartley, okay. And, hey, mate, can I ask the same question? What's happening with your hair, mate? Oh, I'm just trying to get it going, but it's just not working for now, me. Now, mate, yeah. are, are you a comb or a brusher or just hands? I just wake up, let it go. Yeah, what's your mother say, mate? Uh, she doesn't like it, no. Okay, do you know, have you learnt of something called Brill Cream? Do you know what it is? No, I haven't heard of that, no. Ask your mum when we go on there, mate, no. but you're playing very well. All the best for right. us this Thank season, you. mate. Thank you. Okay. Jimmy Barnes here. Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. This is Reppin' with a G from ZZ Top. The best track from the greatest albums of our generation. That's right. From your breakfast and coffee. <laughs> to your drive home. We've got the classic hits that make your work day. And you got a job to do. Go by a lot faster. Hey, if we haven't said it lately. Thanks for listening. The home of classic rock. Don't touch the dial. Powerfmradio.com.au Whether you're a professional musician, a weekend warrior, or just starting out, you need to talk to the experts at Royce Music. With over 35 years' experience, Royce Toowoomba's oldest music store, specializing guitars, drums, and sound equipment, and can even repair and maintain your equipment. Call them today on 46-327-377, drop into their showroom at 17 Bowen Street, or find them on Facebook. Royce Music, selling Toowoomba's finest musical instruments. Hi, I'm Neil from CGD Group and we do printing with imagination. Our products and imaging have that wow factor. Whether it be business cards, flyers, the Coffee Gazette or our brand new A5 video folders and animation. Have your business branding remembered. Call us today on 4639 5553. CGD Group, printing with imagination. On Power TV Australia, we take a frank look at computers, the internet and social media with a team of experts from around the world with Switched On IT. Learn what makes the internet tick and how to keep your kids safe online. Discover a whole new world of entertainment at www.powertvaustralia.com or download the app from the Google Play Store. 
And welcome back to the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club, live and free on Power TV Australia. Now it's back to Paul and the panel for a look at the points table and a preview of round 10. Yeah, thanks Robbo. Welcome back to the Footy Show. And with me is Mark Tukey from the Oakey Bears and Brett Seymour from the Valleys Roosters. The points table though in the Hutchies A grade. At the top of the table all by themselves now is Waddles Warriors on 16. Just behind them is Valleys Roosters 14 in second place. Highfields and Dolby are both on 12. Warwick on 10. Pittsworth 8. Gatton also 8. Oakey on 6, Gundawindi 2, and then the Southern Suburbs, it'll be Brothers then on 2, and Southern Suburbs on nil. In uh, the Toowoomba Toyota Reserve Grade, another great comp, and this is pretty close this competition, with Highfields just there on 13, and on 12 points we have Gatton, Waddles, Pittsworth and Valleys, and mm. only one point behind is Dolby. It's a very close competition in the Toowoomba Toyota Reserve Grade. Warwick 7, Gundy 7, Souths 2, Oakey 2, and Brothers nil and then in the Toowoomba better living better home living under 18 competition and this is an exciting competition as well Gatton out in front on 16 going along particularly well Dolbio only one point behind on 15 Highfields and Souths on 14 the South Burnett team who have done a lot of traveling so far this year on 11 the Roosters are probably underperforming a little bit in the under 18s on 10 Pittsworth 8 Gundawindi and Warwick on six, Waddles on four, the Bears and Brothers both on two. Then we have the Clyde Berghofer second division, where we see Gatton out in front in 12, and they've won this that many years in a row, the Hawks. <laughs> Pittsworth just behind them on 11, Stanthorpe and Dolby 10, Warwick six, Valleys five, Oakey four, Brothers two, and Souths nil. It's a pretty tight table there in most of them, particularly the Hutchies A grade, where they'll be looking Waddles will be looking this weekend to secure their spot in the Madsen Rasmussen. And of course, Valley second will be looking to be their opponents if they can get up over Dolby. So our round 10 preview, Saturday, and this is the OB and Cookie Call. You'll be able to listen to it live on Power Radio, and it's the Sports Club Match of the Day. And it's Warwick Cowboys versus the Oakey Bears. It's at Father Ranger Oval, 6.30 on Saturday night. And we've got the man with us who's going to be taking on the Cowboys. Mark, how do you think is it going to go? What are you going to do to uh, get up over the Cowboys this weekend? Oh, I, I, well, I don't know too much about the Cowboys, to be honest. I know they're a bit like uh, the high fields and the valleys where they just work, work, work. They're fit young fellas again um, but well, honestly all we need to do is worry about us completing sets yes. and then uh, our defense is sound um, we're only kind of leaking you know 20 to 30 points at the moment which is thereabouts for us um, but yeah we just need to be able to complete some sets and then we'll start working out that we're fit enough and we're we've got some um, energy to uh, attack better and all that type of thing will come um, it'll all snowball but at the moment we're just uh, really making it hard for ourselves um, and but yeah it's going to be you know here or there you know we're, we're pretty close on the ladder uh, and um, from I haven't seen too much of Warwick but um, yeah it's going to be a good game they've got um, a fair size um, Ford package would have come up against them Brett the yeah. Cowboys and yeah we've been out there I'll say pack your jumper mate she might be a bit, <laughs> bit frosty nice but they're a physical lot yeah, I've got a jumper in. under the skin mate I <laughs> yeah. in my it's um yeah, they're pretty good. They 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 grow a leg out there, certainly. So it'll be a tough one. Yeah, and particularly on a Saturday night out mm. there at Father Ranger Oval, they're going to come from far and wide, the uh, the Cowboy supporters, to uh, do it. But um, obviously, mate, a tip. You're going to be tipping the Bears to uh, upset the Cowboys this weekend. Of course, I am. Yeah. yeah. And Brett, who are you going to give? Yeah, the tip I'll to? just I'll give Turks one. I reckon they might be a chance of rolling them. Okay, there you go. The two boys are tipping Oki. I'm going to stick with the Cowboys. I think they'll be sporting a little bit from their loss last week to the Waddles Warriors. Uh, our other game on Saturday is at Glen Home Park. 6.30, the A grade will be kicking off. And that's the Southern Suburbs uh, Tigers versus Waddles Warriors. Now, Waddles are on top of the table. Souths are on the bottom of the table. Earlier this year, we all know uh, Souths were really struggling to even put a side together to keep their A grade intact. They've done a marvellous job and great blokes have come out of the uh, woodwork to come back for the Tigers. They're struggling a little bit on the field, but hopefully this weekend they'll put a uh, good account of themselves in there against the Waddles Warriors. But I'll tip Waddles, obviously, top of the table. I'll be too strong. Boys? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good chance for Waddles to probably rest a couple of key players um, going into the you know the halfway challenge yep, and, uh, and also back end of the season. Um, I, I feel sorry for Souths. Um, 
but they're in a position that the Oki Bears were in last, last year, year and the year before that. So uh, hats off to the uh, 18s that are doing double ups and things like that. And all I can say is just hang in there because, you know, we need them in the competition. No one wants to see any club from this Toowoomba comp um, out of the comp. And um, hopefully, you know, they can um, just hang in there this year, um, lick their wounds a little bit and just have fun playing footy. Uh, and see what happens after that. Try and rebuild the club. So I'll go with the Waddles team and Brett, yeah, yeah. obviously yeah, Waddles that, as well. Yeah, Waddles would be winning that one, but uh, uh, hopefully South can put a, a good effort in and put some points yeah, on the board. Yeah, build, build some, something for towards the end of the and year. And it's sometimes games like that when Waddles may rest a few players or whatever, or take mm. them a bit lightly, that um, South might have the opportunity to put a few points on and hopefully. Uh, no one will get injured, but that's usually the games where someone does. Yeah, the, the trouble for them is just stopping the points, I think. And once um, one try comes, they're seeing a barrage. So, yeah, the longer they keep it scoreless, the better they'll be. Then we move to Sunday. And on Sunday afternoon, it's Gat Gundawindi versus Gatton out of Gilbert Oval. Mm. Sunday, 2.30, the A grade will be kicking off. I think this will be a pretty good game. Gundawindi at Gundy. It's always a tough road trip. I think that's probably the longest road trip having to go from Gatton all the way out to Gundawindi. And Gundawindi ticking along uh, quite nicely. A very close loss to Dolby last week, who have uh, been one of the form sides of our competition for a number of years. Um, have you been out to Gundawindi yet, Mark? Yeah, I did the trip from Logan to Gundy. It's a very long drive. Yeah, um, sure but uh, we, uh, we got the job done out there. Um, uh, but they, they uh, threw a lot at us, but we just defended really well on that day. Um, but they've definitely got, uh, they've got what it takes to scare a lot of these top sides for sure. They're in, probably in the same boat as us. Uh, on the day, we can kind of nearly beat anyone. Um, but yeah, it's whether they put it together on the day or not. And it's how Gatton turn up. Uh, it's, uh, if Gatton go in with the same mentality as they did last week, uh, you know, 50 points on the board, you know, they should get them. But um, yeah, you've just got to be careful on those road trips. So you're going to go with the. Uh, I'll go with Gatton. I'll go with Gatton. Yeah. Upset the Gat when you Gatton came, Brett. You've fronted yeah, both these sides, have you? Yeah, um, we have. Oh, no, we haven't played Gatton yet. We got them next. Yep. But hopefully, Gundy give them. Uh, no, bloody <laughs> yeah. wear them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah get apart. stuck into each other, and um, I think Gundy have been up for a couple of weeks. Um, Gatton probably just be a bit too good. So you're going to go with the Hawks. I'm going to go with the Boars to get up over Gatton. I think they'll upset them out there. Uh, Shannon Hicks is obviously suspended for the, uh, for the Gatton team, and he, he's been a very strong forward for him. He's very aggressive. They'll miss him out there. Um, I'm going to tip the Gundawindi team at home, and only because of home. And next is our Obie and Cookie call. That's the Hutchies match of the day. And that's the Valley's Roosters, and they're taking on the Dolby Diehards. Both of them be vying to get a win to get into the Madsen Rasmussen. At the moment, Valley's are two points clear of the Dolby side, and it is at Herb Steinort Oval, kicking off at 2.30 on Sunday afternoon. Brett? How you's going to do them, and uh, who's going to be some of your key players, and who are you got to watch in their team? Um, uh, well, Franciscus, you know, we, he, he gave yes. up his rep jersey, which is you know, a big call for him. But um, I think him and um, Corey Blades have both moved out to Derby, so they'll be spending more time on the training paddock, and they're always the ones we have to look after. They got a good solid four pack, so I think defence is going to be the one on the day. Whoever defends best is, is going to win. They might um, some some key matchups in your side um, against them as well. Like your your Dylan Chown, how good's he going for you? At the yeah, moment, he, he's good. He's away on rep duty this week, so that we'll, we'll miss him. But we've got a, um, a young lad, Zach Miles, going to play fullback. He's an under 18, so he's played a few weeks with us. And um, Jason Sharp, he's been going good. You know, yeah, he, Valley's Rooster Boy back with yeah. us. He played with us at the under 20s for a while, and he was particularly strong. Yeah, he's going really good. So it'll be a whole, it'll be collectively seven team we'll need. So we know it's going to be valleys from Brett. Tooks, who are you going to tip, mate, out of the uh, the, the Dolby team and the Valleys team? Oh, I'm I'm a big Valleys fan to tell you the truth. Um, I think Dolby got a little bit lucky against us, where we were very very poor that day, and we kind of let in four tries in the first uh, 15 minutes or something. So. Um, I, yeah, I, I think uh, Valleys are probably the team to beat, to be honest. There you go. Um, We're all on Valleys this uh, weekend, and that's the Obi Cookie call. It's a Hutchies match of the day, so catch that on Power Radio. And our last game for the weekend is Brothers versus Highfields. It's at Glenholm Park. Kicks off as well, 2.30 on Sunday afternoon. And I think this is going to be a pretty tough task. Highfields got up last week over the Roosters, and I think uh, Brothers could 
had have had a few points put on them last week by the uh, Gatton Hawks. So I'm going to go with um, Highfields. To yeah, put yeah, I'm, a few I'm with on you the there. I'm with you there. I'm with you too. There you go. That's a look at last week. As we go to the break, let's look at an interview with the player of the match from Super Saturday, Dale Perkins. All right, coming up after the break, it's Reedy's Rant. This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Power FM, live and free on Power TV Australia. Andrew O'Brien reporting for QRL and TRL Media, and we're here with the Toowoomba Sports Club match of the day. We don't always give the uh, player or the match, but we thought on this occasion, being Super Saturday, we give it to uh, Dale Perkins. Well done today, mate. Yeah, mate. Cheers, Abby. Um, it's a good game of footy. I reckon we did everyone justice here tonight. Yeah, look, uh, I think uh, appreciate. I think everyone appreciates your experience because you know when the hard yards are needed, when they were coming back in that second half, uh, you really grabbed that ball under your arm and really went for it. Yeah, mate. Uh, we just need to get keep going forward, and that's our bread and butter, us middle boys, and been doing it for years now. So I just keep doing my thing. It started well, mate, which was uh, uh, very, very good. But uh, gee, aren't they a good side? Oh yeah, Warwick are physical, but Travis, Travis has been onto us for weeks now. We haven't been starting well enough, so. I just went out there tonight. I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days. We really had to start well and just got us on the front foot. And But, you know, it's a credit to the boys. Every, there wasn't a bad player today on the field. Both both teams. It's just a good game of footy. Yeah, all right, mate. You look absolute busted when you come on the field a couple of minutes from the end, mate. And thoroughly deserved the man of the match, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> Looking for exposure for your business or event? Take your business, community event, training seminar, sports fixture, function, concert or exhibition to the world with Power TV Australia and Power FM's unique live outside simulcasts. We can turn your next local event into a worldwide sensation with stunning live pictures, interviews, graphics and live action replays for a fraction of the usual cost. From a festival or sports fixtures to a corporate or charity event, Power TV Australia and Power FM can take your message live to our local and national viewers and listeners. Invite the world to your party by contacting Barry today on 0431 390 920 or email programming at powertvaustralia.com for a quote. Hi, this is Sarah and Bron looking after our feet at Hip Pocket Toowoomba. Lace up, zip side, pull on, men's, women's, kids, healthcare and construction. Get fitted for your shoes and check out our range of work socks. At Hip Pocket, we rock it. At the roundabout, take the third exit onto the War Ego Highway. See, honey, we will be there in no time. Um, you were supposed to take this... Oh, online is easier. Make a U-turn immediately. It's all right, honey, Stop. the GPS and is just recalibrating. Turn left into the river now. This is going well. The car park is chockers. Why didn't we just go online? Yes, madam. Just take the mouse and log on to... PowerFMRockShop.com.au The Power FM Rock Shop. You bought the album, saw the concert, now own the t-shirt. www.PowerFMRockShop.com.au Hi, this is Bron and Sarah from Hip Pocket Toowoomba. Join us every Monday night at 7pm on Power TV Australia for our new safety show, Rocking It with Hip Pocket. When we explore work safety issues, demonstrate how to use safety equipment, discuss your workwear and PPE options and much, much more. Find out what safety equipment you need for the job, why you need it and how to use it in this fast-paced, informative show. Discover a whole new world of entertainment every Monday night at 7pm at www.powertvaustralia.com or download the app from the Google Play Store. And remember, at Hip Pocket, we rock it. And thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show. And now it's time for Reedy's Rant. Yeah, thanks you very much, Robbo. Yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, you love about rugby league, but one of the things that disappoints me, particularly at the moment we're hearing a bit of it, is player contracts. You see them, they sign a contract, they agree to a four-year deal, and I'm thinking of Aaron Woods at the moment, and it's not Aaron Woods that's causing it, He's uh, signed a four-year deal, and within six months, the Bulldogs are already trying to uh, shop him around or offer him an exit uh, pattern. But he signed a contract. He thinks he secured his future, and now he could be looking to play somewhere else. And you don't know what sort of contract he's going to get. Boys, you've both played NRL for a number of uh, NRL clubs, so you've signed a few contracts yourselves over the years. What were they like back in your day, Toots? Were they uh, a lot stricter and not as many outs? 
Yeah, you, you weren't really worried about too many outs. Um, but again, when we played, it was uh, it was not it was less a business. Uh, this day and age, it's such a business, and there's so many third-party regulations and all this type of stuff that goes on. So I'm not too on top of what the contracts look like nowadays but I can just see it as the clubs you know when they're it's like a business mate when you're when you're done or over that employee you know you kind of move them on to the next one and it's it goes hand in hand the players are the same when when they've had enough at a club they'll just move on there's no such thing as loyalty anymore it's just business and um, it's hard for the fans I think more more than anything um, as a pl ex-player I understand from both sides of the the coin, um, a lot of a lot of the time they'll sign a, a Woods or someone like that to attract other players to the club. Yes. Because young front rowers would love to play along Woodsy and those type of things. So it's a there's a bigger picture scenario, but I think there is um, salary cap tr trouble with the back ended contracts and things like that. So mm. unfortunately, uh, you know that uh, the nature of the beast is there's not enough money in the in the pot. So you see a lot someone's more, got to go. You see a lot more getting written into a contract now, like Darius Boyd had. Had an out there that if um, Wayne Bennett was to leave Newcastle, he was going. If he left St George, he was going. So there's a lot of those little things. So um, sometimes if they were to move a Bennett on, they've got to keep in mind that they're probably going to lose maybe one of their star players. Mm. Brett, did you ever have any contract dramas or it was no, all pretty towards, crazy? Towards the end of my career, there was, you know, if clubs wanted to squeeze you out, they'd, they'd do, you, you, you'd know, um, sort of, you'd get that feeling. But um, I think Canterbury, uh, shooting themselves in the foot with these um, letting players go and then paying half their contracts. So I know they're paying James Graham pretty much 35, 45% of his deal to Dragons and look what he's doing for them. So, yeah, he's killing them, isn't he? Um, you know, I think they've got a, a few issues uh, in their, their top half that they need to sort out. But, you know, that's the nature of the beast, like Took said. It's a, it's a business and uh, if you're good enough, the club will want to keep you. Yeah, exactly right, I suppose. And uh, one other thing, a big shout out to Aaron Cherry. Uh, very sympathies from all of us here at the TRL Footy Show on the loss of your father uh, during the week. And I'm sure the boys will rally this weekend with the black armbands on and try and get one up for the Bears. Um, but that's it. Thanks very much to Mark. Thanks for coming and joining us on the Cheers, TRL guys. Show. Thank you, Brett, as well. Thanks, You've both been great. Next week, we're going to record the show at 7 p.m., a new time, and it's going to be at the Criterion Hotel in Dolby. So thanks very much to Ben and Lisa and the team out there, great supporters of the TRL. So please come and see us, and we'd love to see you be part of the show. Look forward to seeing you out there at Dolby next week. This is the TRL Footy Show. Thanks to our major sponsors, Power FM, Royce Music and Computer Troubleshooters. If you're in business and interested in advertising on Power TV or Power FM, you can contact us by phone or email. The contact details are on the screen. This has been a Power TV Australia production in conjunction with Power FM. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and remember to download the Power TV Australia app from the Google Play Store. Thanks for your company for another edition of the TRL Footy Show. I'm Robbo. See you next week at the Criterion Hotel in Dolby.